Hi, in this random Linux stuff video, we'll have a closer look at using iSCSI between two Linux machines. In a previous video, we looked at the different storage solutions like block, file, and object, and the link is in the description. So, a logical follow up would be this one on iSCSI. We first start with a quick overview and follow up with a real live demo. And by the way, all the commands that are used in the target as well as in the initiator can also be found in the description of this video. iSCSI is a protocol related to block storage. In fact, there are three layers involved. First, there's the client, or initiator as it's called, and it's very simple. The initiator wants something, a device that it can use as if it were a local drive. So it needs a disk drive. Then there's the server, or target as it's called, and the target has something to offer. It has a block device that it can offer to the client or to the initiator. And thirdly, there's a TCP IP network via which this can all be arranged. Now to connect, there is of course an IP address on both the client and the server that's needed, but the real protocol communication is not based upon the IP address, but on an IQN or iSCSI qualified name. The initiator as well as the target both have an IQN. And the trick is that the initiator will log into the target and then the target will simply map a device which is called a LUN or a logical unit number. And this can be a device but also just a file uh, that functions to the client as if it were a device. So there are multiple options for that. Now the IQN number has the following format. As we can see here this is a Red Hat IQN where the company's name is that of the naming authority and in this case is Red Hat and then there's the date when this naming authority was established and then there's the unique identifier for this particular IQN and you as a naming authority are responsible for the uniqueness of the name altogether and in the lab we'll see that you can just create your own IQN completely as long as you stick to the format so the format is date, company and name and that's it so let's do it so I'm logged into what will be my target and install the target CLI, which is a really, really nice tool to help you set up your iSCSI target. And we start the tool. Now we run LS and see that at the lowest level we've got backstores, iSCSI and loopback. Now in backstores we can create the storage space that we want to offer to initiators. And that can be in the form of block IO, file IO, PSCSI and RAM disk. Now to keep things simple we're just going to concentrate on file IO which means that we're going to create a single file that we will hand out as a block device to an initiator. So we CD into Backstore's file IO and create our first LUN with a logical name which is very original we call it LUN and the file will be lablun1.img and its size will be about 10 gigabytes. Then we go to the iSCSI directory and create our target IQN. And as mentioned, we can pick our own IQN as long as we stick to the format. So remember, date of registration, reverse company name and an identifier. So now we can CD into our target and list its contents. And it tells us that it has created a target portal group, which in fact is the entry point for initiators. But we do not support any initiators yet and also have no LUN mapping set up yet. So we create support for our first initiator. So we cd into the ACLs directory or access control lists and we create an initiator IQN which will later log into our target. So that's got to be the same when we create our initiator. So now we have to map our LUN to the initiator. So we cd into the LUN section of our target and we map the LUN to the initiator. So what we actually just did is we picked up the logical name of a file I.O. that we created and map it into this target portal group directly to the initiator. And after that's OK, we'll make sure that the initiator will need to authenticate. So we enable that in the portal group simply by setting the authentication attribute to 1. And now the very last thing on a target we have to do is we go back into the client IQN once more and set a username and password. So later on when the client wants to connect he will have to supply us with this username and this password in order to be able to access the LUN. So finally we CD into the root directory of our target CLI and save the configuration. And of course we enable and start the target service and then we go into the initiator. 
So we log into what's going to be our initiator and first install the iSCSI initiator utilities. And then we enable and start the iSCSI daemon. And this will generate our initiator IQN and store it in its configuration file. Now when we look at that we see it's a Red Hat IQN, but we'll change it to our own. As agreed, we can do that, so let's just change it to the client IQN that we created in the target portal group. And we save the file. Now we restart the service to be aware of the new IQN, and now we've only got one more thing to do, and that's to set up the authentication part. And we'll do that in the iSCSID.configuration file. So all the way at the bottom, we make sure that we use CHEP and the username is demo and the password is the very bad password. So we save the file and then with the iSCSI administration command we use discoverydb to discover our target. And as you can see it has discovered our target IQN uh, at IP181 in our network. So now we can log in to our target and we see that we have successfully logged in to our target portal and next thing we do is we uh, check our session and we see that the session is OK, we are connected to the server or to the target, and then when we list our block devices, uh, we have this 9.8 gigabyte disk, which was offered to us by the target, and we're very happy.